Hello ladies, in this video I will be installing a Dakota Digital Dash on a 79 Camaro. I also have a video on how to install a Dakota Dash on a 3rd gen Camaro. I will put that link in the description below. This we are putting in is the part number VHX70C, that's CAM. And it comes with everything you see here. And a bunch of wires and sensors. And the brain is right here. So let's begin. Okay, so this comes with a quick start guide. So what we're going to do is we're going to wire everything outside the car that's going to go inside the cabin first, and then pull everything inside the cabin and do everything inside. So all we need here is the pressure sensor, uh, oil pressure sensor, the temperature sensor, and the tack output from the MSD box that we have. Now the speed sensor, we have a VSS wire coming from the TCU because we installed a Phil 60E in this car. I'll put the link to that install in the description below. So we're covered on that one. So let's begin here. Now for the pressure sensor, I'm just going to disconnect the vacuum booster here to get this out of the way. What we're going to do is we're going to use the old oil pressure sensor location to put the new sensor in. All right, so pop this out. Grab a pair of channel locks and turn this out. All right, now just take that off. Brianna's open all over my grill right now, but she's of no use to me today because it's that time of the month. Sorry, clown. All right, so that's done. All right, now I'm gonna cut the original wire over there. Put this end conductor here and crimp that bitch and put that out of the way alright now to put this whole pressure sensor on there this actually hits the intake manifold so we went to Home Depot and we got this and then we got this so we're gonna do like something like this over there in the intake manifold and this elbow it's an eighth inch female on both sides NPT and this one here is the one and a half inch pipe with eighth NPT male threads on each side. So I'm just going to put some uh, Teflon on all these, these two, and we have one on here. And go ahead and put this on. Go with the threads here. And same thing on the other side. in here and tighten her down now pop it right in the hole baby you guys know the deal now put the sensor in And it's good. Put the vacuum booster back on. Now the water temperature sensor, we're going to put it on this. We have a new one with the port on it. So that's a 516. Take this off. Eight millimeter here. We're gonna use this. Has a half inch NPT port here. It's a Mr. Gasket uh, part number two five five seven. We didn't use the one ahead because it's stripped. So we're gonna actually get that off at a later time. And for now, we're gonna use this. This is temporary for now. I'm going to go ahead and install this. This comes with an O-ring. Put the O-ring in the groove. Put some thread sealant on here. And we 
we're good. And we're good. Okay, this supply you with the reducer bushing here. And that goes in here. This is a half inch NPT. So we're gonna put this in first. We're gonna put some uh, Teflon on here. And thread that puppy in. And put a little bit on here. And put it in the hole, baby. And it's good. All right, now put the harnesses that they give you here for these switches. That's for that. And the old pressure. All right, this is the tack output from the MSD box that we installed in this car. I'm gonna make this wire longer and pull it inside the car. I'm going to put a spade connector here and just push that in there and crimp her down. Give it a tug from behind. It's good. Every time you do uh, something inside the engine bay, it's good to use heat shrink or a type of insulated type of connector. Now we're going to shrink this down. Alright, so this is the female end I just did, and I also did a male end here on a 20 gauge wire. Uh, put some dielectric grease in here, I like to put some grease in there. Makes everything go a lot smoother with some grease or lube. And pop it in again. Like that. All right, now that grommet over there with a bunch of wires coming through it, we're gonna stick a coat hanger there and run it into the engine bay. And we're gonna tie the wires from the two sensors and the tack wire onto it and pull them inside the car. Now we're sticking the coat hanger through there. How's it feel, clown? Feels good. Nice and tight. Now I'm going to tape these together and then tape them onto the coat hanger that came through here. And we're good. Now I'm pulling it through. And that's it. All right, now we take the dash off. There should be bolts in here, but they're missing. We're gonna put new ones later. So this should just pop right off. Now remember, we also did a vintage air in this unit here, so we're gonna pop off these ducts, just like that. And on this side, pop off these connectors here. Uh, we also have the lighter here. We had to put spades here from the previous time. So disconnect those also. I take the wiper motor controls off. It's two two seven millimeter bolts here. One there and one here. And this thing comes right out. Now I take this off, just like that. This whole thing comes right out. Okay, this should be four screws here that hold this cluster in, but they're not there. Don't know why. But they will be once we're done with this. So, turn this in the back here. Pop this off here. Just like that. And now you can pop this off here. Just like that. That was for the clock. Undo this light.
undo the main clip, squeeze the ends and pop this out, just like that. And now you can pull this out further. Pop this out and pull this off. Good. This all comes right out. All right, now the wires that we pulled in, I'm just gonna feed it through here and pull it out from the top. All right, now this pin out over here, um, they, they, these are numbered. There's one through six on top and seven through 12 on the bottom. I'm gonna quickly say what these are, and the colors are different from year to year on a second generation Camaro Firebird, which is anything from a 70 to an 81. So number one is a tack lead, two is a temper temperature gauge to the sender, three is 12 volt switched, which is also connected to number eight, four is a fuel level gauge, five is a dash gauge lights, six is a ground, 7 is emergency brake light, 8 is 12 volt switched, which is looped to 3, 9 is left, tu left turn signal light, 10 is the high beam light, 11 is the right signal light, and 12 is the oil light to the sender. So that's what these are here. Now these are the wires we got from inside the engine bay. This is the tack wire. Strip that naked. Twist it around and stick it where it says tack. And then tighten down the screw. And this one's tight, tug, and this one's good. Now from the water sender, you got the black goes to the black on the water and the red to the water send. And those are in. All right, same thing now for the oil sender. Red goes to red, white goes to white, and oil negative. You have the bare wire and the black wire, and this bare wire is for EMI, so this shields the whole thing going down, and it's only grounded at one spot. So that's what that looks like there. Our now speedometer, we had an output from the easy TCU for the transmission we put in here. And this was the output. We had run it up here before we ran it. Uh, now if you don't have this, they give you a little adapter you put on the transmission tail shaft where the VSS goes and it converts it over to a signal for you, electrical signal. And you can wire it up to here. So we're done with that now. All right, now under here, I made two fuse blocks. One is a power all the time. Another one is a switched on 12 volt. And the other one, there's another one, a third one, which is a ground distribution block. So I'm going to put a link in the description below on that install. Uh, so what I did here was I ran three wires up through the dash over here. And one's going to be a ground for the ECU. One's a switch 12 volt and one's a constant 12 volt. And I also made one more wire for, the ground, for, for a ground. And this is for the momentary switches, which I'm going to drill holes over here and put them underneath over here. So I'm just going to put these in the, in the fuse blocks. And I'm going to put 10 to 20 amp fuses for the power ones. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And these are what the fuse blocks look like underneath over here. Alright, so we connected everything underneath where I showed you. This is one of the grounds. Put it right here. Now I'm going to connect these two accessory power and constant power. All right, now constant power and accessory power is hooked up. Once you put constant power, you're going to see this light blink over here. All right, now I'm going to put the momentary switches in. These are 23 64th size drill bits that I'm going to use for this. And we're going to put one here and one on the other side. Excuse the farm animals I have in the back. 
But all right, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this bitch. All right, now pop her in the hole, just like that, and put the retaining ring on it. And that one's good. And now the other side. Okay, what I did was I put one, on one of the wires from the, moment, momentary, the first momentary switch here, I connected it to the other wire, the momentary switch, and that's going to go to the ground wire. I'll put them together in here. So just pop it in there. And now they both have ground. So now this goes to, no, to number two momentary switch on the brain, and this is number one. So whenever you press the button on either one, they share the ground. Okay, so one side of the wire, the other side of the wire for this first switch here, I connect it to another piece of wire here, and it's gonna go up into the first wire, first switch, sorry, on here. Just switch one. So I'll put it right in there, and that's good. All right. So the other switch ground is connected to switch number two. So the switches are done. Okay, we're gonna do the fuel level sender. That's number four. So I'm gonna cut it right there and pop that in. So we connected the fuel level sender wire to another wire, and now we put it into the fuel sender middle terminal here, and just tighten tighten her down and give it a tug, and this one's good. Number nine is left turn signal, and that's the left, and the right signal is number 11, and the right. E-brake light, numero seven, el breco, 10 is high beams, high, number five is dash lights, Alright, now this is the dimmer. Alright, so I zip tied zip tie these together and I'm gonna put self tappers onto that backing over here. So go ahead and do that now. Pop her in right there. Before we bolt this down, we're gonna put the CAT5 cable here. This connects to the cluster. And I put a tape around that Ceph topper. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in. And that's the other side. Okay, so everything is back there. I zip tied a few things in place here. Now this connector here, just put some electrical tape and wound it, wind it around it, because uh some of these power up when you put the key on and you don't want this to ground out to anything, you can have a fire back here. Fire! And that's good. Pop the other end of this CAT5 cable back here and now we're going to put this dash in. And we got cap screws from Lowe's. You gotta push this in place. And lift that up. Try to get it in there. No. Nah. Right. And the last one. I'm gonna tighten this all the way down. Go around and tighten the other ones all the way down. 
All right, now we're putting the switch for the headlights, the connector on this. Now the wiper switch. Cigarette lighter. Cigaretto. Cigaretto. And the AC. And we got new cap screws for this. <laughs> Alright, everything's done. Now we just gotta turn it on and set everything. Here we go. We have to calibrate all the stuff here. Can't really get it on camera, but you set fill sender, speed calibration, those two first. Alright, so we're driving right now. And uh, there's a bunch of settings that you have to go through to set this with the, with the switches underneath, the momentary switches, you just press those back and forth. I recorded some of that setup stuff on my previous Decoder Dash video, so I'm not going to put it in this one. Uh, again, that link is in the description below. Another nice dash from Decoder Digital. They make real nice stuff. So, thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like me, share me, also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, Clowny1969. See ya!